the Charlotte Church shooting at the hands of right-wing extremist Dylan Roof, there has been a lot of debate over the Confederate flag and its availability for sale to the general public. Most recently, Amazon, eBay, Kmart, and many other stores have resorted to pulling the sale of Confederate flag merchandise from their stores. One of the most notable was Walmart, an Arkansas-based company known for its sale of cheaply priced and cheaply made products to rednecks and blue-collar working-class people. At the same time, it is also notable that a group that is pulling merchandise of a symbol of slavery and oppression when they themselves engage in the same activities both domestically and overseas, where they pay third world sweatshop workers pennies an hour while engaging in slave wage, wage garn garnishment, and wage gender wage inequality in the United States. But all of that aside. The recent opposition to the flag comes after some Republican pundits began calling for the removal of the flag from the South Carolina State House, and some even calling for the alterations of flags containing Confederate symbolism. While some have supported retiring the rebel flag to history, others have remained heatedly in support of it, screaming heritage, pride, and other nonsensical bullets. Some have even gone on the attack, like Brian Fisher, a notable fascist politician, used the opportunity to attack the LGBT plus community by resorting to the Godwin's Law approach, calling for the removal of the gay pride flag which he called the rainbow flag of the gay Reich. On his radio program on June 23rd, Fisher called out the gay flag following the anti-rebel flag outcry by stating, If we're going to remove symbols of oppression from our culture, if we come to the point where we say any flag that represents bigotry, any flag that represents hatred, any flag that represents slavery or oppression needs to be removed, then I want to suggest to you that the next flag to be go ought to be the rainbow flag of the gay Reich. The rainbow flag represents the gay lobby, it represents big gay, it represents what I'm calling for the first time today, I'm introducing the new term, the gay Reich. They've got a flag just like the Nazis had their flag. That flag is a symbol of slavery and oppression and bigotry and prejudice and bias. So if we're going to go after the symbols of oppression, we ought to make the rainbow flag the next target for removal in our culture. Now this is where I begin to weigh in on the, this debate myself. First of all, to call out the gay community when they are completely irrelevant to this whole thing is just petty and childish, and just plain unwarranted. Mr. Fisher, I don't think that there has ever really been an LGBT plus supremacy that kept an entire race of individuals captive and mistreated to, and mistreated to work on plantations for 400 years. I don't think that under that flag that there was ever a terrorist group of people that tried to split this country in two. I don't think that there has ever been a movement of religious hegemony in the LGBT plus community that has tried to keep other religious, racial, ethnic, and sexual minorities oppressed. Oh, and the fact that you had, had to jump right to comparing LGBT plus movement to Nazism is just one big epic fail and shows a complete lack of knowledge and validity to your arguments just blithering right-wing idiocy from a blithering right-wing idiot. Now, of course, there are also there are also those supporters who are a little more intelligent and make an interesting argument. However, that argument is usually bland and robotic, like it's medically implanted or brainwashed and indoctrinated into their minds. That, if you think it's racist, you need a history lesson. This is the typical rhetoric from supporters who claim that there is a level of pride and heritage to the flag and that it is simply what they are exercising, in that the heritage and pride of exercising states' rights and their individual freedom. However, I notice that those usually supporting this are either right-wing nut jobs and conservative thinkers or reactionary leftists who are horribly misguided and quickly expose their reactionism and go full right-wing. And as leftists, you know we should never go full right wing. But I digress. Those that continue to support the flag based on the robotic defense of heritage, pride, and individual freedom and states' rights movement, who scream, learn your history, allow me to accept your challenge and play ball by responding to the following statement. The rebel flag was the flag of the Confederate States of America. A lot of people are offended by it and consider it racist. Quite the contrary. The Civil War erupted over the states' rights, not slavery. The South was for the states' rights and the North was for the national government to have more power over the states. Please know your history before you make assumptions and judge. This is an interesting argument. 
but it is also horribly biased and leaves out the point that the Confederate States of America was horribly centralist and was a society for the rich white Southerner. Black rights were and would have been denied, and the South won the had the had the South won the Civil War. The main reason that they didn't was that they were poorly poor, uh, poorly supplied, outmanned, outgunned, vastly unrecognized and disregarded by most rural powers, and would have been economically impossible to sustain itself. It was because of the Union that slavery was ended, and as it would have not have been ended in the South, and if so, definitely not right away. And even if it had, there would have been a very apartheid-like society much worse than Jim Crow or segregation. Poor white males during the Civil War were not able to vote, and they would have been denied their basic rights. And even for those that did, well, life would have been extremely difficult for them. This trend most likely would have been improved to include all white males, however, this uh, however, women's rights may have been stalemated long into the 20th century due to this deeply patriarchal society that existed and still exists in the South. Also, given the North was heavily industrialized, this and the South was uh, and and the South was mainly rural and agricultural, the North really did help to industrialize the South during the Reconstruction era, as well as help helped to solidify the ideals that whites could not deny the suffrage of African Americans and could not deny poor people the right to vote. This case, the case in point, the North was heading towards a progressive era and the South wanted to stick with the traditional state of being. There also has been a historical sense of white superiority ingrained in the affluent Southerners that controlled the South at the time and that sense of racial superiority still exists amongst some of the white populations of the South today, and is blatantly obvious in the extremist groups down there. In addition, Christian rhetoric was plainly visible in the Confederate Constitution, with usages of the terms Almighty God and other religious overtones, a violation of the founding concepts of secularism, separation of church and state, and religious freedom that America was originally based on. This would most likely have horribly violated the rights of religious minorities soon enough. Wrap the flag up with all you want to call it, heritage, pride, whatever. It was a symbol of, rebelli of rebellion over shitty ideas, white supremacy, and Christian fundamentalism. All the things that make up what we call fascism today. And I know that there are some people out there that using the arguments, too, that the U.S. flag was flown during great times of genocide, oppression, racism, slavery, etc., far longer than the South. Yes, it did. And there's definitely no denying that. The U.S. Has flown during, the, the US flag has flown during some of the most brutal and horrendous acts ever seen in human history. Murder and relocation of Native Americans and First Nations tribes, the countless scores of slaves used to build its imperialist machine, the theft and land, the theft of land, the great the rape of women and children by U.S. forces, the imprisonment of entire groups of people under based on their nationality or race, the spying on its own citizens, and the witch hunt of political opponents, or war crimes. The list goes on. It's safe to say that the U.S. has a very large stain, has very large stains of blood on its stars and stripes banner that so proudly waves and is a symbol of American patriotism and nationalism, sometimes on the level of extremists itself. And while I myself, I myself don't tend to be a, uh, and while I, my, yeah. while I myself tend to be a bit bitter at the flag that flies above my beloved California and have my own issues with it, you will not see me burning it or disgracing it. I may fly it upside down in the back room on NorCal Corner, but never would I disgrace it so long as I am forced to be subjected to its, uh, to its regime. I consider myself a Californian. I consider it to be a nationality, my nation, my homeland, my motherland. But I am not so bold, egotistical, and arrogant to deny that I am all, all, not also born of the United States and that I am an American. It is as much a part of me as it is anyone else. It is because of this that I find great fault in a group of neoconservative numbskulls and li libertarian ignoramuses who think that their pride and heritage is so important that they fail to understand the real issues behind it. They claim we are the ones needing a history lesson. 
but it is them that does not understand their true history and the complexities surrounding it. If they did, they would not be so bold, egotistical, and arrogant to continue to support such symbols of prejudice. But to use the argument that the U.S. has flown for almost 240 years through such turbulent and controversial periods of history as opposed to the four years of the CSA is not a favorable comparison or a very valid argument. The U.S. has had its times of relative peace and stability, as enjoyed its own periods of democracy and pseudo-equality. The South, however, was an autocratic, centralist, ethnocentric society based on Christian fundamentalism, white colonizer traditionalism, and white supremacy. It was a fascist regime that devolved into a fascist organization like the Ku Klux Klan and other right-wing political and religious extremists only trying to boast their own egos. At the end of the day, I can offer a little bit of easiness for the supporters of the rebel flag. You may have lost the battle, but you haven't lost the... Oh, wait a minute. That's right. Fuck you. I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner. Drown out the rebel flag. Peace.